Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the November Outlook. So that's the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of November. Now, if you don't know your Sidereal Vedic Astrology signs, then you can click on the description below. There will be a link that will take you to a chart calculator. And what you can do is you can plug in your details and you'll get all your signs. And then you'll be able to make the most of this report. Now, before I begin, I'm going to cover off a couple of housekeeping matters, a couple of brief things. So one of them is Instagram. On my Instagram profile, you'll see that it says no DMs. Uh, the other day I was on Instagram and I was looking and yeah, it turns out there have been some direct messaging type things happening there. So what I wanted to say is please send me an email if you want to get in touch. The other thing I wanted to say is that sessions are now available. So if you go on the website, you will be able to book your session. What I do with the sessions is I close the system out once I've filled up a month I'll do six weeks this time so how about we do six weeks and then I'll close it and the reason I like to do that is because I don't like there to be such a big delay between when you book and when you get your reading uh, I tend to think that you know for you as an experience it, that delay shouldn't be too long the other thing is I don't like to hold your cash for too long either so uh, yeah I just you know prefer to do it that way and if ever you go to the website and you see that you know um, you see that it's fully booked or whatever just come back after a week or two and you'll see that it's open okay um, yeah I'm never gonna be so fully booked that you don't get a session you'll definitely get a session absolutely all right, now the other thing I wanted to mention was that there was an error in Scorpio. So last month, and I will mention this in the Scorpio section because I realize not everybody watches the whole thing. So there was an error in Scorpio. Now a couple of you mentioned that and I'm so grateful to you for mentioning that. Thank you so much to those of you who mentioned. You can always let me know if there's ever an error in any one of my reports. It's really good because it gives me the opportunity to correct it. Basically, I had said that there was a new moon in Virgo in the 12th house. I should have said the 11th house. Okay, so instead of, you know, something about wishing for something in terms of your spirituality, you could have wished for a new car. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, you could have wished for world peace. How about that? That's maybe the 11th house, right? So, um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I will get that right. This time I double checked everything in my notes we're good so but if there is an area you just let me know okay I really like to know now I think I've covered all my housekeeping type stuff why don't we get on to the outlook for this month let's have a look let's see what's going on so I've called this episode eclipse season I was really debating between do I call it eclipse season or sudden changes because I do think this is going to be the month of sudden changes Firstly, we've got an eclipse happening. And the other thing we've got is we've got Mars passing beneath Uranus and he's in a square to Saturn. So I think all this tension could cause some sudden changes in the month. And I am going to be reading that for each one of you personally this time. We're going to have a look and see in what area of your life could there be some sudden changes. Now, last month I had said that it would be a tough month. Was it a tough month? Well, for me personally, it was a pretty easy month. I didn't notice too much. I also looked at the news and I also noticed that nothing that tough had happened. So I was trying to figure out why. And what I noticed is that there was a lot of tension. I did find there's a consciousness group I'm part of and that's where I get all my alternative kind of news because I don't watch TV. But I did see that the tensions were high in October so that was correct the tensions were really, really high there were some countries that were talking about war and and those kind of tensions they they were there but nothing actually materialized and I'm trying to figure out why is that astrologically when I look back at the month I noticed that Mars was combust and when Mars is combust I did some research into this and yeah sure enough you know Mars was not that powerful. Mars was not able to act on what he might like to do, right? Mars is that warring planet, you know, 
the masculine energy that wants to do, that wants to create, I guess. And then, yeah, wants to do. I always think that Mars is a real doer. So Mars was a bit incapacitated. Mars was combust. And I think I had said in the report last time that October was going to be a really bad month, a tense month. And I said that this is going to happen again in March 2022. I had a look at the astrology again for March 2022, and I still think the same. It's going to be, at the minimum, it's going to be a tense month, but things could materialize that aren't so great in March 2022. I'm going to keep an eye on this. And I do see March 2022 as being tense because Mars won't be combust at that time. The next time after March 2022 that this phenomenon happens of Mars being, you know, in hard angles to Uranus and Saturn, this is going to happen again. So we've got March 2022, we've got August 2022, okay, early August 2022. That's going to be tense there as well. And then when is the next time after that? Well, the next time is many years away. It's going to be May, June 2030. Okay, so we're not going to see this particular tension for a while after August 2022. Okay, August 2022 is really going to be the last time of that particular tension. There may be other tensions with Pluto, with Saturn, there's always something tense going on. He is the planet of limitations. So, you know, I mean, there's always something. But in terms of this particular tension that has been present in the collective, you know, we're, we're not going to see that again for a while. But we are possibly going to have some sudden changes this month. And as I say, I'm going to cover that for each sign. Also, we have an eclipse. An eclipse, as you know, it can cut something out of your life. Something could leave, something could go. And sometimes that's a very good thing because what if it's something that we could do with saying goodbye to, like a, a dynamic that we no longer need, you know, or a habit that we no longer need, right? Now, from the 1st to the 5th of December. So I realize that we're talking about November here, but because this is early December, I thought I might bring it up now. We have Mars opposite Uranus in square to Saturn. And yes, Mars is not combust. So some things could materialize from the 1st to the 5th of December. And that is something to watch out for because yeah, Mars won't be combust at that time. So we we'll definitely keep our eye on this and see what transpires. I have a note here, the tension all around us will continue though. Mars will still be opposite Uranus and square to Saturn. Yeah, and I'm going to read this for every sign this month. But there is always a way out. And the way out is through meditation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you a clip that was shared on the consciousness group that I tune into. And it's basically showing what happened very recently in a place called, I believe it's, I don't know if I pronounce this correctly, Trieste, Trieste, Italy. I'll put it on the screen so you can see. As you saw there with that clip, those people were not worried about the tension between Mars and Uranus and Saturn, were they? They were in meditation. And when you go deep into meditation and when you are truly in the now moment, you, you are escaping that orbit of Saturn. Saturn is the creator of time. Okay, so he creates time. And if you want to get out of time, you want to step out of his orbit, all you have to do is, is meditate. That's what you really have to do. So if over the coming months, you know, and these months are going to have their moments of tension and difficulty, find some time to meditate. 
that's all that is going to be a great thing and i do this every day i make sure and my meditation is really simple i just go out into the garden i look at the flowers and that's pretty much all i do and i make sure i have a good five to ten minutes when my mind is actually not doing anything it's not thinking thoughts may come but i let them go like clouds and i'm just kind of sitting there and it's very nice so i do this as much as i can all right so we have eclipse season what is going on with these eclipses so on the 5th of november well before the eclipse we're going to have a new moon now the new moon is happening on the 5th of november and that is in libra in swathi nakshatra so this could be a time where you get lots of ideas and i will be talking about that in the mini breakdowns for everybody but collectively this is to do with the air element so could there be some something happen around information how information is distributed could this be it could this could be a great time for some new initiative to launch i know that there are new social media networks being launched that is happening so 5th of november if you are launching a new social media network that would be a good time to do it uh, the other thing is that our individualism will be highlighted at this time we've also got the eclipse on the 19th of november and that is going to be uh, let's have a look here so we've got moon in kritika nakshatra sun in vishaka nakshatra so we are looking at taurus we're looking at scorpio and the god of fire agni will be alive okay at this time so this is a really fiery kind of uh, eclipse actually which is really interesting the sun is coming out of debilitation here the sun is ready to reveal something but it's so interesting because we have ketu here ketu is a suppression energy and i really do get this sense that because ketu is in scorpio this is why yes there is so many truths but they're, they're being suppressed at this time so I feel like I mean some truth could come out on, on the eclipse 19th November you know that is a possibility but equally Ketu is there Ketu is suppressing it's a suppressing kind of an energy so there are many things that are just wanting to get out you know and, and many of us who go down various rabbit holes we, we know about these things but yeah they're not coming out um, Vishaka also contains toxins of the mind so I do have the note written on my screen could an unpleasant truth slip out at this time yeah Kritika is of course a cutting energy could we be further divided and of course that is what's happening in the collective in a big way right now we have Rahu in Kritika don't we let me just double check that I bring my um, chart up yeah we do Rahu in Kritika Nakshatra Rahu in Kritika Nakshatra we've got Taurus here we've got culture culture in the arts and all this kind of thing culturally we are being divided it's just incredible what is going on at this time so we've also got this month this is quite a big month we've got Jupiter moving into Aquarius on the 21st of November onwards now I'm actually not going to cover this in the mini breakdowns I might do a separate astro chat where we look at Jupiter moving into Aquarius or I might just incorporate that into the December outlook I haven't worked that out yet but Jupiter's moving into Aquarius this is a really really good thing I'm happy about this he's going to be there until 14th April 2022 Jupiter will be in a stronger place and I suspect that this is going to be great for the court system great for all the court cases that are going on right now because we have seen and we have noticed that the courts have not really been uh, operating at their full power over the last well at least I would say year and a half um, if not longer yeah it's it hasn't been good it hasn't been good Jupiter has been far away from his place of exaltation and I think because of that I think because Jupiter is so far away from where he is strong 
we've had a breakdown, various breakdowns in society, you know, uh, and in, in the court system as well. It hasn't been great. I've got the note here that lots of court cases are taking place right now. A lot of them will become very prominent when Saturn enters Aquarius in 2023. So this month I'm going to do the mini breakdowns. How are we doing for time? We're not too bad. For each sign this time I'm going to read the Saturn, Mars, Uranus squares. We're going to have a look at the place where you might be experiencing some sudden changes in your life. We're going to take a look at Venus which is great. Venus has always got some good news for just about everyone. Uh, we're going to have a look at the Sun and Mercury. We're also going to have a look at the New Moon and the Eclipse. And as I mentioned earlier, I will cover Jupiter in either a separate astro chat or in the December Outlook. Now before I begin the monthly breakdowns, I'm going to give you a little how-to guide where you can see how to use my mini reports. So you can watch this from your ascendant or your moon or your sun. Now what are you going to get from each? Well the ascendant you're going to discover what is going to take place. This is like the what. The moon is kind of like the how you know uh, and well yeah the sun is kind of like maybe the why. I don't know. Let's, let's experiment with this. Hmm, I've got a theory developing right now. Well let's go back to the ascendance. So this is the what. This is physically what is going to happen. What is going to unfold? How will the physical path of your life unfold? Okay that's how I look at the ascendant. If we look at the moon this is yeah how. This is kind of like how you're going to feel about it, how you're going to interpret it mentally, you know yeah the mental emotional interpretation of the what. And then we've got the sun. The sun could be the why. Um, you know because from the sun perspective that's the soul, that's your core essence, that's who you are. And yeah maybe you'll get some some why, some answer you know as to uh, why are these things happening. You could you could experiment with that. But what I suggest everyone do is that you watch these mini reports over a period of time and you see which one really works for you okay because for some people maybe their moon is very strong i know for me the moon counts a lot i like very much to see from the moon it really when i've studied my chart and i've looked from the moon uh, transits from the moon it's always very strong for me ascendant is as well so i always look at two i always look at ascendant and i always look at moon these are essential i think the ascendant definitely does show the physical path of your life it does show the what it does show what's going to happen now the sun why would you look at the sun okay a lot of my audience, many people in my audience, you guys are creative people, you're healers, you're writers, you're musicians, you're doing all kinds of incredible things and you're expressing yourself from your soul essence. So if you're a very creative person you will want to look from your sun. That will be important. And as you go and as you watch these you will know, maybe for some of you it's just one, maybe you just need to watch one and that's it. That's, that's great. Okay, so you see and figure out how this works for you and it is really by testing it out and by trying and seeing and you'll know, you'll know which reports you need to tune into. So I hope that's clarified which ones you need to look at. If you have any other questions you can let me know in the comments below. It's always great to hear from you. But why don't we get in to the mini reports. We are going to start with Aries. Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now let's take a look at where this Saturn, Uranus, Mars square is happening for you. These various squares, I should say plural. So this is, we're really looking at kind of the middle third of the month. So we're looking at the 10th or 11th of November through to roughly about the 21st. This is not precise. We're really looking at that middle third of the month. So you're going to have Mars in your 7th house, Saturn in your 10th, Uranus in your 1st. So there could be sudden changes in your relationship. There could be sudden changes at work. If you 
are self-employed, maybe you've got a public, maybe you run a YouTube channel or something like that. There could be some sudden changes that happen in relation to that. So these will be things you want to watch out for. Now, if you're watching in particular from the perspective of your moon, from your mind, you might discover that you change your stance or your position or outlook on something relating to these areas. Let's take a look at Venus. So Venus all month is going to be in Sagittarius. This is happening for you in your ninth house. This is really good. So it's a great time for learning. It's a great time to enhance your skills, to skill up at something. Great time for Zoom conferencing with friends in far off places, right? If you are able to travel, it is a good month for that. But of course, I do believe travel is something you want to be really, really, really careful with at the moment. Uh, so, you know, I tend to think all but essential travel, but hey, I mean, if you have to travel, you have to travel. But if you can do the Zoom conferencing thing with people in far off places, that would be a really good thing this month. Now we've got Sun and Mercury from the 17th onwards, they're going to be moving into Scorpio. So for you, this is your eighth house. So any issues of shared assets are going to be highlighted at this time. Could be a bit of a tiring or draining time on your physical body. So if you're feeling tired, make sure you rest. Then we've got the new moon on the 5th of November. That's going to be seventh house Libra for you. So this is a great time for you to be capturing any new business ideas. If you've been wanting to expand your business or expand what you do, or you know maybe you're in a job but you want to do a bit of moonlighting, you want to you know do get your side passion off the ground kind of thing. This is a really good time during this new moon for you to be capturing some ideas as to how you'll be able to make that happen. So really rich time for you on the 5th of November with that beautiful new moon. Now on the 19th of November, there is an eclipse and that's happening for you on your 2-8 axis. So there could be some big changes to shared assets at this time. This is a really great time, in fact, for you to do some cord cutting. So if there are relationships, maybe past relationships, past heartbreaks, past people that you're still a little bit attached to, but you know you want to clear that because you want to move on with your life, maybe you want to meet new people, this is a really great time to do some cord cutting. And how to do that? Well, you know, just have a look at YouTube. There will be many energy healers and practitioners who have made wonderful videos about that topic. So Aries, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So we're going to take a look at the Saturn, Uranus, Mars squares. Where are they happening for you? Before we have a look at where, we're going to see when. So that's 10th, 11th November to about the 21st of November. So we're really looking at the middle third of the month where you might see some sudden changes. Now for you, this is happening. Mars is in your sixth house, Saturn's in your ninth, Uranus is in your 12th house. So there could be sudden changes in career or in a legal matter. Uranus may be demanding that you take your power back from authority figures or from society or even indeed from your parents. Okay, This is a time that is asking you to become your independent self and take your power back from wherever it's been invested in the past. Okay, You might also come face to face with a competitor or a tough situation at work. So it could be competition work-related competition. Okay, Venus is in Sagittarius all month. So this is happening in your eighth house. This is lovely. Okay, Taurus, you've uh, last couple of months probably you haven't had great uh, energy in your relationship. Now you've got a good couple of months ahead. So you're gonna have a great time with your partner and there should be some nice, positive, beautiful transformations happening in your love life. So that's great energy. Now Sun and Mercury on the 17th onwards, they will be moving into Scorpio. So for you, this is happening in your seventh house. So be careful of conflicts in partnerships. 
uh, both love and or work related. I'd say though it's a bit more work related. You've got some nice welcome relief there with Venus in your love life so that's really good. But I will say in all relationships across the board, we've got sun in the seventh, so be humble and that will get you through anything, okay? Life will teach you when you've got sun in the seventh, you know, you know, you got to be humble. Uh, now we've got a new moon happening 5th November and that's sixth house Libra for you. So you might be getting some new business ideas. I also said that for Aries as well. But this could be new business ideas that will help you compete better. It will help you stand out from the competition. This could also be a great time for you to put yourself forward for new work or a new job or any of that. Great time to plant seeds in relation to your work or your service in the world. Now on the 19th of November there is an eclipse that is happening on your 1-7 axis. So there could be changes in partnerships, in your business uh, or indeed even in yourself. You know how you feel about yourself, how you present yourself. It's also a great time for cord cutting with any past partners. So if there are past partners, even yeah it could be business, it could be love life. But anyone from your past, maybe someone if you're still heartbroken over someone or something like that and you just want to clear the energy, you just want to clear the space, you want the new to come in, well a great time to do that cord cutting is on the 19th of November. And if you want to learn how to do that, just have a look in the YouTube search bar. I'm sure there will be lots of great videos all about cord cutting or you can work with a really good energy practitioner near you. So Taurus, thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, thank you so much for tuning in. Hang on, I just want to, oh dear, the camera's like mucking around here. Hold on, I think that's okay. How's that? Oh no, that's not good. There we go. I think that's better. Okay, let's start again. <laughs> Let's start again, Gemini. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I was just, it was kind of skewed and I'm like, this is terrible. I have to solve this. Gemini, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to leave all that in. You get to see me as I am, Gemini. I can be myself with you. I tell you what. Now, we've got Saturn, Uranus and Mars squares. Where are they happening for you? Where is this going on? Well, for you, it's happening in a very interesting area. But before that, I want to say when. This is happening in the middle third of the month. So we're kind of looking at the 10th, 11th November to about the 21st of November. There might be some sudden changes in your life. So for you this is going to happen, Mars in the 5th house, Saturn in the 8th, Uranus in the 11th. So there could be sudden changes in finances for you. If you're invested in the stock market, you know, could there be some sudden changes here? I don't know. I'm not a financial person by any means. I don't have a clue. But there could be some changes in your wealth or how you have your wealth set up or something like that. I've got the note here, yeah, perhaps you'll want to arrange your money differently. There could also be some changes to your creativity, to your projects. Maybe you will get some sudden flash of inspiration or some sudden ideas come in. So this could be really good in terms of um, your creativity. I also have the note here, big shift in your professional network is also possible at this time. Now Venus, Venus is going to be in Sagittarius all month. So when it comes to love, this is happening for you in your seventh house. It's not the best transit. This is a really good transit for you to focus on yourself, to redirect your energy back to yourself actually, which is which is an interesting one. Next month is going to be better for love for you. So if you're out on the dating scene or you're single or you know um, you're interested in someone, next month is definitely going to be a better month for love. But this month is a better time for you to focus on yourself and to pamper yourself to look after yourself. Now we've got Sun and Mercury on the 17th onwards. They're going to be in Scorpio. So for you this is in your sixth house. This is great energy for your career, this is great energy for your service to the world, your business, what it is that you do, great time to win new clients 
and if you're involved in any legal cases this is a good time hopefully to make some positive progress in your case. Now we've got 5th of November new moon that is happening for you 5th house Libra so you might get some new creative ideas. This is a good time for you creatively because you've also got Mars in that fifth house there, don't you? Yeah, it's a great time creatively and kind of hands-on creative ideas, things that you can implement, things that you can hit the ground running with. So that's 5th November new moon. Great time for ideas. Definitely keep a journal, keep, keep something by your side and jot those ideas down. Now the 19th of November there is an eclipse and that is happening on the 612 axis for you. So there could be some big changes at work. Okay, something to do with your career, something could be eclipsed out. Um, do take care uh, of yourself at work. You might notice people around you being eclipsed out. This kind of energy is happening everywhere. So do take care and Hopefully, you know, you get the right guidance as to what to do. Uh, there's a lot of good guidance out there at the moment. A lot of people are going through the same thing, so definitely don't feel alone in that regard. And I've got the note here as well that outmoded spiritual beliefs can go at this time. Anything spiritual that has been holding you back, isn't that interesting? Or it could even be some escapist habits or tendencies. Maybe you procrastinate a lot. Maybe there's some kind of habit like that that you just want to have eclipsed out. That could really happen at this time. And after this eclipse, you might feel that you are so much more focused and you're so much more clear and ready to go in life. So Gemini, I'm wishing you well. Take care out there. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, we're going to take a look at the Saturn, Uranus, Mars squares. Where are they happening for you? But before we look at where, let's take a look at when. So it's going to be in the middle third of the month. So we're looking at the 10th, 11th November to about the 21st of November, thereabouts. And for you, this is happening Mars in the 4th, Saturn in the 7th, Uranus in the 10th. So for you, there could be sudden changes in regards to your career your marriage or your home life. Gosh, you're going to be touched in all areas there. These are all the important areas. And yes, you could feel some uh, sudden change happening here or it could manifest as some tension. Okay, so you might even change your stance on something completely. Isn't that interesting? This could be a very positive thing for you. I've got the note here productive Kendra action. There's a lot of Kendra energy here. This could be really positive, okay? So if there's something that you want to change, maybe this is the time to make a change in any one of those areas. Let's take a look at Venus. So Venus is going to be in Sagittarius all month and for you this is happening in your sixth house. So this is not the best transit for Venus, um, unfortunately. So love life, you're gonna find that this month is not the greatest month, and even I would say the month after. But then after that, you're gonna have some much better times when it comes to love, okay? So this month is not the greatest for love. I've got the note here, redirect your energy back into yourself if you can. And this is a really great month for self-love, okay? Um, I've also got the note here, you might find a new passion for your work at this time. So if you, you know, are wanting to put your love into something, put it into your work. Now on the 17th onwards, we've got the Sun and Mercury entering Scorpio. And for you, this is happening in your fifth house. So I have the note here, be careful with speculative gains. Not a great month to be getting into that kind of thing. Obviously, if you have to, or that's your job, that's fine. You know what you're doing, but it's not the best month for speculative gains. These two planets, Sun and Mercury, they might drain your energy a little bit. So if you're feeling tired, be sure to rest. And on your romantic scene, as I said, you know, Venus is not in the best way here. And again, this is not particularly the best energy. I've got the note here, if you are romantically involved with someone, do you think of the other person more? Okay, so try to empathize, try to see things from their point of view more if you can. Now we've got a new moon happening on the 5th of November and that's 
in fourth house Libra for you. So you might get some new ideas or new inspiration for your home. Maybe there's something you want to change in your home or there's a project you want to start. Maybe there's some renovations you want to start or you want to start mapping something out or you want to, maybe you want to start looking for a new place to live, you know, and you've got a Pinterest board and you're keeping, I don't know, clips of where you want to be or something like that. So yeah, that, that could be something you do uh, on the 5th of November. Now on the 19th of November, we have an eclipse. So for you, that's happening on your 511 axis. This could be big changes in your investments possibly, or the way that you arrange your finances, that's quite possible. I have the note here again, be careful with speculative endeavors. This could, all be, this could also be to do with romance as well. Okay, so this is a time, and this is a tricky time, okay, for you, because things are not looking in the best way love-wise, love are they? And we've got this eclipse happening, and sometimes this can eclipse somebody out. Sometimes that's welcome news. I know that there are people who kind of watch the eclipse kind of going, am I going to be out of this relationship? <laughs> I know people like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. So sometimes that's welcome news. Sometimes it's not so welcome news. What would that be for some of you out there? I don't know. But what I can tell you is that with this eclipse, it's a great time for cord cutting. So if you have past heartbreaks, if you have people in your past that you haven't got over yet or you know you want to clear the space and look it doesn't mean that you eclipse them out forever they might come back healed okay so what you might want to do at this time for the 19th of November is look up some videos on YouTube and just learn a little bit about cord cutting and there will be some guided meditations things like that people you know teaching you how to do that and who knows maybe your energy might shift in a really positive way this month. So Cancer, thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're good. Thank goodness. All right. So Saturn, Uranus, Mars squares. What's the deal with that? Well, we're going to have some sudden changes. That's what's going on there. Now, this is going to happen in the middle third of the month. So we're looking at 10th, 11th November to about the 21st of November. Mars is in your third house, Saturn is in your sixth, and Uranus is in your ninth house. So there could be sudden changes in relation to a legal matter, that's quite possible, or something to do with the competition at work. You might also notice that your courage fluctuates a bit, and maybe you're doubtful or you're not sure about things. It's a really great time for you to pick up some more personal power at this time it could potentially be a very empowering time for you okay and especially now that you have this information you're entering into this time period in a conscious way so you might be able to really pick up some power at this time you've got Saturn in the six there and that's really strong that's really good so uh, this could be an empowering time now Venus Venus all month is in Sagittarius and for you this is in the fifth house so this is beautiful Leo, this is a beautiful month for love. And this is kind of your last beautiful month for love for about a couple of months. And then it's going to be good again, okay? So, but this is a really nice time. So I have the note here, if there's someone that you fancy, make a move, Leo, you know, what are you waiting for? Uh, it's also a great time for your creativity. So perhaps there's nobody on the scene and that's fine, but maybe you're feeling very creative. Definitely enjoy your creativity. You should feel inspired and able to, you know, express yourself your true self in some way now sun and mercury they are moving into scorpio on the 17th onwards so this is happening in your fourth house this is actually really good for concentration if you are studying uh, mercury you know mercury is very well placed here and it's also good for money as well from mercury's standpoint now the sun in the fourth is not so great this could tire you a little bit this could also make things a bit challenging in your relationship with your mother so do be careful of that if you know there are any tensions present there now on the 5th of november there is a new moon this is happening third house libra so this is a really great time for you to socialize if that's possible for, for where you are that's wonderful and this is also a great time to renew your cv to update your cv maybe to put yourself out there a uh, great time to you know 
yeah, if you are looking for work, it's a great time to be doing that as well. Now the 19th of November there is an eclipse and this is happening on your 410 axis. So there could be some big changes at your work. There could be some something might complete at home as well. Okay, so this is a time of completion but definitely some big changes at work and do be watching out for you know something might be eclipsed out of your life that does typically happen during eclipse times okay so Virgo Virgo welcome thank you so much for joining now we're going to take a look at these Saturn Uranus Mars squares where are they happening for you now when are they happening firstly they are happening in the middle third of the month so we're looking at about 10th 11th November through to about the 21st of November so this is happening for you, Mars in the second house, Saturn in the fifth house, Uranus in the eighth house. So there could be some sudden changes in family. There could be some sudden changes in your romantic life as well. Okay, um, I have the note here, perhaps you will have a change of heart on some matter or you might change your stance in relation to someone else. Venus all month is going to be in Sagittarius. So this is happening for you in your fourth house. So this is a wonderful transit. This is a great time to enjoy time at home. Okay, enjoy time indulging at home and eating beautiful food and being with your family. Great time to redecorate if you're feeling inspired and good time. It's a good time to socialize, good time to be with your mother as well if you can. Now we've got Sun and Mercury moving into Scorpio on the 17th onwards. Now this is quite good. Oh this is great. This is great from a Sun perspective. Great for your career, great for promotions, great for being seen, great for if you're applying for work, applying for new jobs. This is really good. So that's the 17th onwards. And then you've got a new moon 5th of November that's happening second house Libra. So that's a really good time to wish for something for your family. Maybe there's a big wish you have in relation to your family or maybe something to do with wealth um, or how you'd like to expand in the future. Hopefully you'll get some new ideas at this time. Okay, So these new ideas that come through on this 5th of November new moon it, it might not just be for you, it might be for your whole family. You might get some incredible new idea that, wow, if we just do that, my whole family is going to have a, a, a better time, you know. Um, yeah, really amazing. So on the 19th of November, there is an eclipse that's happening on your 3-9 axis. So there could be some changes regarding well, travel isn't really happening uh, for, for everybody across the board. Could be some changes regarding travel but if this doesn't apply to you there really could be some changes regarding your gurus or people that you learn from that's interesting this could be a real time where you let go of a guru <laughs> okay this could be a time where maybe you find out something about a guru and you're like oh my god i didn't know they were into that or whatever and like they just you're like no, I'm not, no they're not my person anymore that could happen on the 19th of november so do look out for that Virgo. All right Virgo, well it's looking like a really good month ahead for you. Uh, you know there's some really nice stuff in there so thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra welcome, thank you so much for joining. I'm just looking at the time is going to run out soon but I will start a new memory card after you. So we're going to take a look at the Saturn Uranus Mars squares. Where are they happening for you? So before we look at where, we'll have a look at when. This is happening in the middle third of the month. So we're really looking at sort of 10th, 11th November to about the 21st of November. That's where these sudden changes could take place. And for you it's happening Mars in your first house, Saturn in your fourth house, Uranus in your seventh house. So there could be sudden changes in your partnership, could be sudden changes in your business, in your public, your following, if you run a social media channel or any of that. Um, there could be changes in your home life as well. So this is touching quite a few areas. And perhaps you're going to change your stance in relation to one of these areas or in relation to someone, perhaps to your partner. 
Venus all month is in Sagittarius and for you this is in your third house so this is a beautiful month oh, I love this yeah it's a beautiful month for socializing for being with friends for long distance zoom calls you know um, it's a feel-good month from your feminine side from your feminine perspective okay so be sure to receive all the good energy that is going to come your way so it is a really good time for you to indulge and relax if you can now sun and mercury are going to head into scorpio and that's going to happen on the 17th onwards so this is happening in your second house this is really good this is great energy for mercury uh, you're going to be able to enjoy really fantastic conversations with your family so that's great your wit will be at an all-time high you might even be quite amusing and you know you could have some fun there um, sun could be a little bit hard on your body sun could be a bit draining you might experience headaches um, a little bit more than normal kind of thing uh, and it is possible as well for your ego to be triggered by a family member if you are you know all cooped up in one house kind of thing then yes on the one hand you might enjoy time with them but at the same through mercury but then through the sun you know your ego might be triggered or you know you might feel a bit claustrophobic even so so watch out for these dynamics see how they play out in your month uh, you know your mercury might be quite strong which would be great fifth house uh, no not fifth house fifth of November new moon what's going on all right so first house Libra oh this is great so you so basically we have a new moon on the fifth of November for you it's happening in your first house Libra this is a great time for you to get ideas on how to reinvent yourself okay maybe you need to be inspired and you need you want to you want to change something about how you do things or who you are or how you present yourself to the world there's something you want to change about yourself well you're going to have plenty of ideas and inspiration on the 5th of november as to how to do that and on the 19th of november we have an eclipse so that is happening on the 2 8 axis so there might be some changes to your shared assets or your big wealth and this is a great time to cut cords with any family members or extended family members that perhaps sorry about that the camera got cut I knew that was going to happen um, great time to cut cords with any family members or extended family members you aren't getting on with perhaps there have been some family members or in-laws or various people who you know the relationship hasn't been so good and maybe you want to you know cut cut the cord uh, cords with these people now with cord cutting typically what happens is you know if you're working with a skilled energy healer or even indeed just doing a meditation on YouTube the point of it is really just to cut the negative cords okay you're not going to be cutting any loving cords or any of that love is what we are we are all connected by love okay so you, you can't cut that anyway but you can cut the negativity and if you need to do that at this time the 19th of November the eclipse is a really great time to just do some cord cutting and you know clear up your energy field if you feel the need so Libra thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Scorpio Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining now before I begin anything I have to apologize for making an error last month I had said that the new moon was going to be happening in your 12th house I should have said the 11th house so I do apologize for that and I really want to thank uh, the two Scorpio people who made mention of that in the comments below I really appreciate you doing that and of course if ever there's an error please just let me know in the comments below I really appreciate the opportunity to make it better all right so Saturn Uranus Mars are going to be in squares this is happening kind of in the middle third of the month so we're looking at 10th 11th November to about the 21st of November thereabouts and for you these tense squares which are going to produce sudden changes are happening it's affecting your 12th third and sixth houses so this could be affecting your confidence a little bit 
Uh, your confidence might be a bit hidden at this time. Um, but Saturn in the third is really helping you out, which is a good thing. So Saturn in the third, no matter what, okay, is, is bringing good stuff to you. But there might be some tension there with Mars and Uranus. There could also be some sudden changes to your spirituality or work or the way that you work. Perhaps there could be some changes and this would be a good change to, let's say if you've got a habit of procrastinating or escapism or fantasy thinking or any of that, you know, maybe there could be some, some changes to that. And after this time you come out feeling a lot more focused and refreshed. Uh, this, could be, this could be good. Venus all month is going to be in Sagittarius. Now for you, this is happening in your second house. This is great. So this is a time to treat yourself to a special purchase. If there's something that you've been eyeing out and you have the means, this is definitely a great month to treat yourself and to go and get that wonderful thing, whatever it is. Um, Sun and Mercury on the 17th onwards, they are going to be moving into Scorpio. So for you, this is happening in your first house. And this could be a little bit draining on the physical body. If you're feeling tired, make sure you rest. If you are getting headaches or any of that, this could be the reason why. The other thing is people might find it hard to get close to you as well. Um, you know, Sun in the first, sometimes people find it hard to get close to such people. So you might find that you know, you need a little bit more space during this month and that's perfectly fine. Another thing is that it, your expenses could go up this month as well, so do keep an eye on that. Now on the 5th of November there is a new moon and that's happening in 12th house Libra for you. So you might get some terrific ideas, some insights regarding your spirituality and in fact this could be an amazing, amazing time where, because you think about it, this is a new moon in the 12th house. New moon, you will be able to see more. You'll be able to see behind the veil. Okay, you have a new moon there. It's a portal, it's an opening. You will be able to see more than before. So you might get amazing downloads, insights, inspiration, artistic ideas. It could be a lot that comes through. So do keep a journal or something on the 5th of November. Uh, Scorpio that's going to be important now on the 19th of November there is an eclipse happening that's on your 1-7 axis so there could be some changes to your sense of self this is a great time to reinvent yourself perhaps you know when you reflect on yourself and you think gosh you know and, and, and you know where you want to be five ten years from now and maybe there's something that you've been doing that you're just like, I just don't want to do that anymore. You know, this is a great time for that to eclipse out. Great time to reinvent yourself, to reinvent who you are. Changes in partnership, especially your marriage, okay? Um, this is also a really good time to do some cord cutting with regards to past partners. There are some past um, loves that you've had that haven't worked out or whatever and don't worry it's not like you're you know doing the cord cutting and then you eclipse them out forever no they might come back to you healed okay but you're taking some time and space for yourself and just clearing up your energy field this is a really good time to do just that so Scorpio thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Sagittarius, Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to take a look at Saturn, Uranus, Mars squares. Where are these happening for you? So before we take a look at where, we're going to take a look at when. It's happening in the middle third of the month. So we're looking at about the 10th, 11th November to about the 21st of November. So in that space there, you might experience some sudden changes. And for you, we're looking at the 11th house, second house and fifth house. There could be sudden changes to your wealth and how you bring opportunities in to make big wealth as well. Uh, you might be able to restructure things in such a way that you are able to bring in more wealth. So that's pretty exciting there. Now Venus, 
all month is in Sagittarius and this is happening in your first house. So this is wonderful actually. You can indulge your physical body, look after yourself, you can rest when you feel the need. Um, I've got the note here, treat yourself to a haircut or a spa day. Sure, whatever it is, whatever it is that you do to physically pamper yourself and relax, you can definitely do that at this time. Now, Sun and Mercury on the 17th onwards, they are going to be in Scorpio in your 12th house. So you might find that it's a little bit harder to sleep than normal. When the Sun is in the 12th house, it's very possible. So I've got the note, keep good books by your bedside. Um, expenses could really go up at this time, so just keep an eye on that. Now there's a new moon on the 5th of November that's happening in 11th house Libra. This is wonderful. Wish big. Wish for everything you want. Okay, so whatever it is that you want, put your wishes in on the 5th of November on that new moon. You might also get lots of ideas at this time. So be sure to keep a journal uh, and a pen with you, you know, wherever you go. There might be amazing creative ideas that come through on the 5th of November. Now on the 19th of November, we are having an eclipse and that is happening for you on your 12-6 axis. So there could be some changes at your work, something could go at work, something could get eclipsed out, okay? Um, or equally something in relation to your spirituality. Maybe, I've got, this is an interesting note I have jotted down here, perhaps a favored escapism technique of yours may not work. Maybe you're trying to escape but you're not able to uh, for that day. I don't know but this could also play out in terms of you know if you've got bad habits of procrastination or something like that. You know, maybe you might be able to lose those bad habits at this time. Some dynamic uh, that doesn't serve you, you might be able to have that eclipsed out. It's very possible at this time. But Sagittarius, I'm wishing you well. I know that you're in your final phase of Sardisati. Those of you who are watching from the moon, hang in there and keep going. You're doing amazing, okay? So thank you so much, Sagittarius. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just going to check the time. We're okay, good. Right, so Saturn, Uranus, Mars squares. Where are they happening for you? you know, these the, the squares that are going to form sudden changes. Now this is going to be present in our skies really the middle of the month. We're looking at the 10th, 11th November to about the 21st of November. In that period, we're going to have some sudden changes. Now for you, this is happening in your 10th, 1st and 4th houses. So that could be sudden changes at work. This could be sudden changes to do with your self, your entire sense of self. This could be your stance on something really changes. Uh, this could be in relation to your home life as well. But your position on something, your stance might really change or somebody around you at home or at work, their stance or position might really change on something. Now Venus all month is going to be in Sagittarius. So this is happening in your 12th house. This is lovely. This is a time for you to indulge yourself spiritually. You might find yourself uh, procrastinating more this month, but I'm going to say that's a good thing. If you've been watching any of the other signs, you'll see that I've been speaking badly about procrastination, but for you, I'm saying do it, okay? If you have the time to procrastinate and enjoy and just escape and watch videos and watch 10 tarot videos in a row, do it, okay? <laughs> this is the month for that. Um, yeah, I've got the note here, it's okay to you know, escape into good music and books and all that kind of thing. If you can take a load off, escape and unwind, do it. Now we've got the Sun and Mercury on the 17th onwards, moving into Scorpio. So this is happening in your 11th house. Oh, how beautiful. I'm so happy for you, Capricorn. You deserve this bit of good news that's coming your way. So time to shine, network as much as you can. Get your name out there, great time for, to go for new clients, seek new opportunities, all of that kind of thing. You've got the sun here in the 11th, you've got Mercury in the 11th, you probably got Ketu there as well, don't you? I mean, that's okay, but <laughs> you've got sun and Mercury there, they're lighting things up, so hopefully you're going to be able to attract uh, some some new, new clients, new money, new work, new opportunities, new friends, 
Okay, really good for all that. 5th of November, there is a new moon and that's happening 10th house Libra. So this is a really good time to contemplate that next step up in your career. What would you like that to be? And there could be some inspiration, some insights, some new ideas on the 5th of November that will help you get there. Okay, so keep a journal, keep a pen with you, jot down any ideas that come your way. On the 19th of November, there is an eclipse happening and that's happening on your 11-5 axis. So there could be some changes to speculative gains. There could be some changes to your finances. There could also be some changes in opinions. Um, you know, your opinions might change. How you are perceived by your peers might also change at this time. So Capricorn, I know that those of you who are watching from your moon sign, you are at the height of your Sarisati and I'm sending you so many best wishes and strength and starlight and all that good stuff. Hang in there, keep going, okay? You are doing amazing and anyone who's having Sadi Sati at this time, I'm telling you, it's the best time to have it because the whole world is out of shape. So you might as well <laughs> have your Sadi Sati now. Great timing, really. All right, Aquarius. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. <clears throat> Aquarius, thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're doing good. All right, so let's take a look at these Saturn, Uranus, Mars squares. Where are they happening for you? So they, are, well, before we look at where, we're going to look at when. So this is happening really in the middle third of the month. So we're looking at the 10th, 11th November to about the 21st of November. And this is happening in your 9th, 12th and 3rd houses. So for you, there could be sudden changes to your inner authority. And I'm saying to you, know that you can do it. Okay, it's a great time to feel empowered, great time to take your power back from the outside world, from society, from parents, anywhere where your authority, you know, has been invested elsewhere. Bring your power back. You be your own authority. That's what this is about. So I've got the note here, yeah, everything is happening for you and even the challenges are there to build strength in you, okay? Every time there's a challenge, you're coming up against something where, you know, you can learn something and you can grow. That's all the challenge is. It's not there to bring you down. It's there for you to figure out how to overcome it and you will. Venus is going to be all month in Sagittarius, okay? And this, oh, wonderful. This is happening in your 11th house. I'm so happy, Aquarius, because you need some good news. You have needed good news for a while, and this is some good news right here. So you can socialize, you can enjoy time with people this month. You deserve lighthearted fun. Yeah, you do. You're now on a great long stretch of many good months of Venus energy. I'm so happy for you, Aquarius, because you need something like this in your world, and you've got it now. This is great for singles, okay? If you're single, if there's someone that you like or something like that, something could really progress and blossom over the next few months. So I'm very happy for that. Sun and Mercury on the 17th onwards are going to move into Scorpio. So that is happening for you in your 10th house. This is wonderful. This is so good. This is a time to shine. This is great for work. This is great for promotions. This is a great time to be seen and to be appreciated for what it is that you do. So I know it's been a good, long, hard slog for you, Aquarius, but there's some really nice energy happening for you this month. Now, on the 5th of November, there is a new moon, and that's happening ninth house Libra for you. So that is power and authority, okay? Then you might be getting some ideas on how to take your power back from the outside world, okay? There's going to be some inspiration, new ideas, downloads, insights about how to be your own authority, you know, to take the power back from wherever it's been invested in the past. On the 19th of November, there is an eclipse that is happening on your 10-4 axis. So there could be changes to work, could be changes to your home life, could be a little bit of both. So you might be, um, you know, giving up an, an old career I've got here. Yeah, you could be giving up an old career goal as well. It's an interesting thing, this. Yeah, if you are transitioning from one career to another, uh, and you're a little bit you know, feed in both worlds or something like that. This might be a time where you actually let go uh, of, of anything old. 
and anything that maybe you've been keeping as a safety net but you don't need anymore you know that that could happen as well Aquarius but for those of you who are Aquarius moon and you're in your first phase of Sati Sati I want to say to you hang in there keep going you're doing amazing don't don't worry too much I know it's 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 there's a lot of uncertainty there's a very difficult times I know it's hard but you're doing amazing keep going okay um, and you've chosen the absolute best time to have Sati Sati because the time when your Sati Sati finishes Saturn will want to give to you and the world will be in much better position okay so you're actually you've timed your Sati Sati brilliantly because by the time you finish it the world is going to be healthier and able to reward you and give you really good stuff so hang in there you lovely Aquarius people okay now I'm going to welcome Pisces Pisces welcome thank you so much for joining we're going to take a look at the Saturn Uranus Mars squares where are they happening so they are happening well before we have a look at where we're going to have a look at when so they are happening in the middle third of the month so we're looking at the 10th 11th november to about the 20th 21st of november somewhere there so this is affecting your 8th 11th and second houses so there could be some sudden changes to your wealth and or how you bring wealth in now we've got venus all month in sagittarius that's happening for you in your 10th house so this is a great time to find or to ignite a real passion for what you do for a living okay this is not the greatest month for your love life for romance this is that will happen next month okay uh, and next month onwards you're going to have many months of a good stretch with your love life but for now for this month this is really about finding the love and the passion for what you do for a living on the 17th onwards we're going to have sun and mercury enter scorpio and this is happening in your ninth house i've got the note here be humble at work especially around superiors just put your head down and work lots and lots if you can and tune into venus tune into what am i passionate about here at work that's not connected in with say for example superiors or other people just this is just about you and your work what do you love about what you do tune into that energy now on the 5th of November we have a new moon and that is happening in 8th house Libra so this is a really great time to wish for things for your family or your extended family you know if, if you, at this new moon you want to put in a wish or something wish for something for your family this is also a new moon all about ideas so you might be getting inspiration and insights now because this is eighth house libra you might be getting inspiration and insights that are occultic in nature perhaps some secrets will be revealed to you perhaps you're going to be quite psychic on the 5th of November perhaps you know um, a psychic gift might open up for you or something some occultic thing will be made clear to you or you might get ideas or inspirations downloads something like that you're going to be quite alive and active on the 5th of November it's quite exciting uh, and then on the 19th of November there is an eclipse and that is happening on your 9-3 axis so there could be some changes to how you travel I know that doesn't really apply to too many people at the moment and it's really not a great time to travel anyway but there could be changes to gurus in your world so if there's a guru that you follow maybe you might find out something about them and then you're just you're eclipsed you're just like oh I'm not dealing with that guru anymore that could happen it's that kind of thing that could happen but there could be some shifts or changes or something that happens in terms of yeah and maybe someone that you follow or you learn from or a change to a mentor at work or something like that and this is an eclipse so there could be um, people cut out of your life that, that is a real big possibility at this time but Pisces thank you so much for joining and thank you to anyone who has watched the report all the way through I, I do know that there are some people who do that but um, thank you so much for watching everyone I really appreciate everyone who comes here and if there's anything you'd like to let me know in the comments below please do let me know I'd love to hear from you 
Thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.